I'm Cray Price with Surface Water Solutions. Welcome to our next video in this series on what's new in HECRAS 5.0.4. In this video, we're going to hit the new rating curve function. And uh, in order to demonstrate that, I'm going to start with the model that we've uh, just completed in our previous tutorial on the uh, internal boundary conditions. So I'm going to open up RAS Mapper here and have a look at some of my results. Essentially, I'm going to assume now that I'm going to be looking for a rating curve across this creek channel. Now, the, you can see the topo has some issues, and I'd probably want to define this a little better, maybe with some ground survey if there were a real gauge located right here, um, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to turn on my uh, 2D area. You can see what uh, the break lines look like across here. And um, I'm going to add a profile line to show where I'd like to extract my rating curve. So let's say we have a gauge located right about here. I'm going to add a profile line looking from left to right downstream and cut it about here and save this profile line for my rating curve. Now I always recommend taking uh, these sorts of things that you've drawn in and either drawing them outside of HECRAS as a shape file or exporting them as a shape file so that you can see um, you can recover these in other models and in other projects. So I'm going to put it in my shapefile directory and call this rating curve. This has now extracted the rating curve. Now if I wanted to go in here and click on the time series, you can see what's going to happen here. It's going to snap to the grid sizes or the grid cell faces and I don't want it to snap to those meshes it uh, can introduce some inaccuracies I'm going to want to enforce this as a break line so that I can use this actual profile line as my flux cross-section so now that I've exported it as a shape file I can go into my 2d area in my break lines open up the attributes once I'm editing this and uh, for my break lines when I uh, open up the attributes table I can import that feature which I've just saved as a rating curve. So now that I've got this in here I'll give it a spacing in this case same as the others 10 to 20 and when I exit out of this I can now go in and um, enforce this break line and now you can see that every all the cells line up with it. Now that doesn't do me any good until I've actually rerun it so that uh, we get our hydraulics using that break line. I'll ramp up the flows a bit so that we can see some floodplain flows here as well. Save my edits and go into my flow. In the unsteady flow file, I've got a flow hydrograph in here. I had ramped this one down. I'm going to pull it back up. Maybe I'll make uh, 10 times the flow come through this thing now. And now when I rerun this, um, it's going to actually recognize that break line and compute hydraulics running uh, from cell to cell right across that face. So as this runs through, um, I guess we need to explain a little bit about um, rating curves. When you extract a rating curve, you're going to want to grab the stage hydrograph um, from one single point, and you're going to want to grab the flow hydrograph from a cross section. So in 1D, you could grab it from the same cross section and it wouldn't be any different because the water surface is flat straight across that cross section. In 2D, you can have a different water surface elevation for every single cell. So what you're going to get here now, I'll explain a little bit about this new uh, rating curve function. See, we've got a little bit of floodplain flow going on here. When I grab this uh, profile line and right click on it, I now have a new feature here called rating curve and it says beta only and that's because the beta version um, does have a little bit of some issues in it um, that uh, might need some resolution but you can see I only let this thing run up and back down uh, for part of the uh, receding limb if I had let this keep running for another hour or so I'd bring it back down here you can see the looping going on what you'll also notice though is there's some odd oddities going on on in this area down here and uh, what's happening there is it is averaging the water surface elevation across all of these cells and so you're not getting a stage hydrograph from a single cell so if you actually had a gauge located say right here you would want to actually extract that time series um, as a uh, stage and I'll turn on the water surface elevation here if I had my gauge located right there I'd pull my time series out and go for the water surface elevation and get a stage hydrograph pull it from the table take this uh, column stick it into Excel, 
do the same thing for my flux hydrograph across the uh, section. Grab this table, take these, plot that into Excel, plot one against the other, and then you'll actually get the real rating curve that's based on the water surface elevation at that point. So I hope you enjoyed that. We have additional articles on how to generate rating curves uh, using HECRAS. Again, watch out for this feature. If you're using Rain on Grid, you're not going to want to use this feature at all because it will average in your sheet flow uh, water surface elevations up in the overbanks here um, and artificially increase your stage. So uh, it's a very useful tool, but um, it's something that you got to watch out for uh, some of the pitfalls in that one because um, you might end up uh, not having this. You might end up with a water surface elevation um, that, that exceeds what you're actually looking at. So uh, let me know what else you want to see on these uh, videos going forward, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, thanks a lot. Have fun with the new version of HECRAS. Thanks.